Welcome to the Jenkins Governance uh, meeting. Today is uh, July 29th. Um, we have a few topics for today. So we will discuss so, what are the recent news in the project, and we will discuss terminology updates, uh, core release infrastructure, um, and talk about the CDF graduation process and uh, the fair videos, and also discuss uh, our communication channels uh, going forward. Um, are there any other topics uh, which we are missing here? No. Uh, problem. Okay. Mm. So uh, let's begin. So the first topic is about core release automation. So Mark, would you like to summarize the status there? Sure, so we've delivered uh, weekly releases for several months. Long-term support release was just re delivered this week. Security releases were delivered last week. Um, good progress on all of them. Uh, thanks very much to Olivier Bernin for his work. Um, timing is very good. We're delighted with the progress. We expect that the next release of the LTS in mid-August will also use the core release automation. We think we're, we're ready to go. So, yeah. And that's, and yes, Olivia has agreed to host an online or to do an online meetup in August discussing what we've learned from core release automation, et cetera. Yeah. So sorry, I haven't announced the meetup here. But, um, I will do it uh, tomorrow. Okay. Um, so yeah, thanks to all contributors because yeah, it's a major update. And uh, during that, we also experienced a lot of issues. For example, this Windows packaging. Thanks a lot uh, to Alex for that. Uh, well, uh, for fixing uh, all the stuff and. Yeah, now we are also ready to ship uh, the new Windows installer and LCS. So we will be officially able to close this item which has been in preview for more than one year. Which mm -hmm. is uh, yeah, a great achievement as well. Okay. okay, anything else on core release automation? Okay, I'm going with the LCS baseline selection. So it's just for information of all contributors. Um, yeah, we changed the process uh, this spring. So now we start the LTS baseline selection two weeks earlier. And there is a developer mailing list thread about uh, choosing the new version. So the version which is expected to land um, in mid-September. And currently we are working, we are looking at uh, 2.249 or 2.250 which are basically the same. So yeah, you can see that um, uh, there is a lot of warnings because yeah, you had uh, issues with uh, the delivery infrastructure, uh, but yeah, basically it includes all changes in 2.248 and all the stabilization fixes after that. So um, if anyone has concerns or feedback please vote in the mailing list thread because yeah you can see that uh, this change log is quite long actually i found uh, two missing uh, changes there so it will be even longer soon um, but yeah any feedback will be appreciated okay and yeah, on the separate note, uh, there should be also a release candidate today, but we don't have Oliver on the call. So my understanding that the uh, release is not a uh, release candidate is not ready. Is it right? Yeah, I, since the release, the baseline has been selected, it can't, I think it can't be ready. I think that's very reasonable. Mm. I was, should, I was. Uh, we should have the RC 4.4 today, and we don't even have a pull request yet with the back ports. They're due today, so that's likely getting delayed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, but. Right, okay. Yeah, so maybe it will take a few more days, um, I ping to Oliver. So generally there are not so many changes to backport, but um, still it would be nice uh, to review them. 
because there is a few non-trivial backports and yeah, I'm not sure how much changes we will need to pick up from previous releases. Yeah. Yeah, and one topic related to that is terminology backports. Uh, because uh, we agreed at the last meeting so that we would like to backport terminology. So yeah, for me it was a particular interest to see whether it would happen in this release. But if not, it will land in September, so it's not a huge deal. When you say backport, exactly what do you mean by that? Uh, well, uh, we agreed uh, to uh, treat uh, terminology fixes um, as uh, backportable uh, bugs uh, in localizations. So, for example, uh, there was a fix uh, for French localization uh, some way in the recent versions. Uh, which oh, uh, okay, right. So, you're not talking about the upcoming coordinator rename? No. Okay. We're talking only about agents. Uh, coordinator, yeah, it's a bigger story, or whatever it's called. We will talk about it just in a few minutes. Okay, uh, yeah, just to clarify agent terminology backports, TBD. Okay, so next important note that, yeah, as we discussed at the last uh, governance meeting, uh, we published the roadmap. So all the changes are integrated. Thanks a lot uh, to Alex Earl for being a BDFL delegate in this story. So as we agreed, everything is published. The JEP is effective, roadmap is effective. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, promotion and announcement say in August for that. Uh, but yeah, now we can consider it as a kind of actual uh, roadmap for the project. And yeah, it includes quite a number of stories. And what we agreed at the last meeting that we will likely do the next roadmap meeting in late August or early September, uh, so that uh, we will have an opportunity to keep uh, running these processes. But yeah, roadmap meeting is not uh, something uh, uh, which blocks changes. It's just a kind of uh, scrap for the roadmap where we review the stories and clean uh, them up. Uh, but uh, any pull request can be submitted at any moment. Okay. So moving on. So for terminology, yeah, I guess Alex, so would you like to make an update there? Sure. So, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so, the uh, poll is closing today. Uh, Mark, I'm not sure what time that actually happens, um, but the poll is closing today, and then we can take the recommendations from that poll and bring them into a governance meeting to discuss the, the replacement term uh, or terms, uh, however we want to define it. So we should be able to do that in the next governance meeting. Actually, I think we can do it here, Alex. Yep. The the uh, poll has closed. Yep. And so, Oleg, okay. I assume you could bring it up for us to see the results. And Yeah, that was my impression as well as we discussed. So we deliberately um, set a uh, deadline for poll uh, just before the meeting. Mm -hmm. So we can probably postpone it until the next governance meeting. but. Yeah, the poll is over. So here are our results. So controller is the winner, basically beats all other options. Uh, then next is manager, uh, which 95 to 35. So taking uh, the total number of votes, it's uh, a yeah, significant lead. And then the coordinator, which is cl quite close to manager, then primary, which is uh, cl quite close to coordinator and then main director, lead, and executive uh, quite behind. So basically we have uh, one front runner, uh, three terms which got uh, pretty much uh, similar results. 
I will probably just take a screenshot. Mm -hmm. So Alex, what would be your preference? Should we discuss it today or should we postpone the final selection until the next governance meeting? Um, what I would like to do is um, take these terms and run them through Google Translate at least and kind of, um, oh, sorry, I feedback. Um, run them through Google Translate and see kind of if there's any, um, and reach out to some of the members of the community who, who speak those languages um, and have them give a little bit of feedback just so we don't pick a term that has um, negative connotations in another language um, or some bias uh, as well. So we, we just wanna make sure that um, from that from this, we don't introduce additional issues. So that, that's why I'd like to wait until next um, governance meeting to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was really looking forward to call Jenkins Feather another microcontroller, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> looks like I will have uh, to wait with it. Uh, and yeah, so we run terms through Google Translate to validate uh, localization options. Uh, yeah, next uh, governance meeting, final decision, right? Yes. Okay. I have a quick question um, about do we do we only want one replacement term or multiple? Um, I brought it up in the discussion and several others as well that it would be quite weird to call the uh, node that's running inside the main Jenkins process to also call that controller or manager when it doesn't control or manage anything. Um, but I'm not sure whether that was taken into account with the terminology selection. Uh, agreed, that was, um, and I'm, I apologize for not responding to that um, on the mailing list. Um, I think this one is specifically about the server um, is kind of what we're talking about. Um, the node term is something that we can um, th that we can uh, also think about, but I, I agree that controller does not make sense for the main node um, or what used to be called the master node. So that is definitely something we need to think about as well. Yeah, so okay. I just to clarify, the plan is to replace that, but uh, so we get rid of the term master completely, but uh, not necessarily with the same term as we chose here. That is correct. That that is my understanding of what we're what we're, our plan is. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just uh, picking what we uh, phrasing we took uh, in the announcements. So basically, Jenkins application the way it's called uh, but yeah so sub components uh, may have three different names and, and I think that's very valuable to increase clarity by being more precise right that's that's I think that's a great idea yeah so uh, agent coordinator we also had a discussion about Jenkins web interface And yeah, so on. Mm -hmm. So, does it address your question, Daniel? Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, do we have any other steps? Um, maybe not specific to this um, terminology change, but we need to start looking at, at um, how we can change the source code um, at some point. Um, th that's going to take a lot of research and so forth because it's all over the place. Um, and I, I know it's, it's not as visible as within the UI and documentation and things like that, but it, I know lots of people go look at the source code when they're doing things. And so it is still a very, um, visible portion that would be nice to, um, to fix up things like dumb slave. Um, you know, that, that would be one of my very first things that I would want to, 
um, to address and things like that. I totally agree with that. Uh, we should um, take a look on that. And yeah, for Domslave, we had an action item one year ago to do, make a discovery how we could clean it up. But yeah, there was no conclusive result. And yeah, other actions we only need to take is actually communicating the changes because uh, yeah, I guess uh, we still need to officially announce that. Um, Alex, could you clarify whether you would say the source code changes or internal changes are within the scope of the uh, master renaming or is that a separate project altogether? Because so far I had the impression that similar to what we did with agent, uh, we would look at uh, labels, documentation and such first. Yeah, that you're absolutely correct. It is not part of this current master. Um, it's, it is a next step in the process of cleaning up terminology in Jenkins. It's not part of this master rename. So it's not something that I'm looking at doing as a short term or, or, you know, uh, within this rename, it is something for the future. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a huge project, but yeah, we, we have certainly have some class names that, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. But even without classes, uh, master terminology rename in Place a lot of changes in our documentation, a lot of changes on Jenkins IO in general, in our built in documentation like web UIs. Mm -hmm. So, um, on my yeah. help, all sorts of places. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, and I'm and, and not saying that we're ready to start on that class renaming. I just don't want, want to lose sight of that goal. So, as long as it's in the roadmap, I think that's fine. Yeah, so on the roadmap, we actually have uh, two initiatives now. One is agent terminology cleanup, which is basically a bulk effort, which includes everything. Uh, probably we want to break it down and move uh, API and classes to future. Because yeah, basically it makes sense to update agent uh, terminology API and master terminology API at the same time, theoretically. It's a implementation detail. Uh, I just agree with Daniel that we won't be able to do it soon. Agreed. Mm. So, yeah, reconsider roadmap items. And to be more focused on use case. Uh, yeah. So assuming that we do a final decision uh, at the next governance meeting, uh, how do we plan communications on that? Do we do any communications before the next meeting or do we do everything after? I think we communicate once we've decided. Um, so the, we already said that the poll is, cl is closing on July 29th, so I don't think we need to resend out information about that. Um, however, I think at, definitely once we um, make the decision, um, we can send something out to the dev list as a follow-up to the terminology updates thread that we had before. Yeah, yeah so dev list is okay. What about uh, Jenkins blog, social media? Uh, I guess at this point, it rather makes sense to do them. At least to talk a bit about what would be our roadmap there because yeah definitely um mm -hmm. i'm i'm writing a post for cdf as kind of part of this i don't know it, it, i can write something else for uh jenkins blog specifically um I, i'm fine either way well we can uh, cross post it so we, it really depends on the content we can have the same blog or we can adjust it uh, to the jenkins needs uh so, yeah, but you can figure it out later. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just need to ensure that uh, the timeline for, for CDF blog post would be aligned. Right. Yeah, I'm supposed to get them the first draft by this Friday or sooner. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure when they're planning on publishing it, though. Well, you can talk to them to ensure that uh, it gets published after the decision.
Yeah, I think that CDF would be quite flexible with that. Okay. Does anyone plan any other communications? Am I still online? Yes, you are. Okay. Yes. And I, I don't think there's anything else on the communications plan there. I think that's good. Yeah, let's see. Well, we also need to somehow highlight uh, Alex's uh, blog post. Uh, so, but uh, again, now we can do that because we did voting. So public communications so wouldn't impact the voting result. At least, uh, it's my understanding. Yeah, but yeah, I think we can take it offline. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, next step, reconsider roadmap items to be more of, oh, yeah, it's roadmap. So other updates, um, yeah, one thing was mentioning, uh, I started cleaning up uh, blacklist, whitelist in the change log, mostly related to JEP 200. So now it's integrated. But again, uh, if you want uh, to do major updates, we need uh, to see what we do because uh, there is quite a number of references. What it's worth a few weeks ago when we decided this was happening, I also updated all past security advisories and I think update documentation related to security as that was uh, as that is now talking a lot about allow lists and deny lists um, when it previously uh, did not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically we agreed uh, to use uh, uh, allow list, uh, deny list in the core, right? Or I mean, whatever other terms make sense. Uh, some, the, the whitelist, blacklist, uh, as it turned out, was also a very unspecific term. So bringing to the attention that it's often better to just explain exactly what is being listed and what the result is, uh, even yep. improved the uh, readability. Yeah, and, and that's something that we brought up on the mailing list too, I think, uh, or in the governance meeting a few weeks ago or something that um, definitely it doesn't have to just be a search room place, whitelist to allow list and so forth to actually look at what's written there. And if it's there's a better way to explain the context, then that's absolutely um, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a specific example, um, for example, I distinguish in security advisories between um, signatures of methods in script security sandbox that are user approved and those that are pre-approved through some static list as part of the plugin, which is quite the difference. Um, and before that, just use the same term. Yeah, this is a great thing, actually. So we should also keep cleaning it up. Fortunately, the exposure in the code base is much lower. Well, except uh, the whitelist annotation in uh, pipeline API. But yeah, I think that we can uh, do something about that because annotations can be inherited. So it's basically a small matter of programming uh, to get it updated. A few hundreds plugin. Okay. Anything else on terminology updates? Okay, let's move on then. So, uh, two quick updates. One is core infrastructure initiative. So, I posted the update you know, to the developer uh, mailing list. 
So great news, we actually officially passing uh, the CI uh, criteria. So what it means that we have uh, we are compliant with all the basic criteria defined uh, by um, uh, infrastructure initiative. So you can find that there are some descriptions uh, and answers uh, which provide more details about what we do, what we don't do, etc. And uh, in addition to that, we started the reviewing criteria for silver and gold level. So in CI, in total, you can get uh, to 300 percent. So right now we are at 133 percent, but it's enough to get a passing badge. So right now it's applied and it's also available on our core repository. So now if you go here, you can actually see CI badge just to have it. Uh, so. Mm, this story is far from uh, being completed because if we uh, go after silver and uh, gold criteria, there is a lot of requirements. Some of these requirements, uh, well, I, they are quite arguable, but they, we want to comp comply with them. Some of them are quite reasonable and it's a uh, matter of uh, improvements. So, yeah, uh, we can uh, do a lot, but it's not uh, on the table right now. So if someone wants to keep working on that, please feel free to contribute to suggest changes. I will be happy to incorporate them, but uh, yeah, at least in the coming months, I don't want to push it further towards silver level. Okay, any questions on that? Like now. Okay, the next one is CDF graduation. So, yeah, like we discussed at the last meeting, uh, I submitted a request to CDF to start uh, the graduation process. On July 21st, there was a, a CDF uh, talk meeting where we briefly presented what uh, we changed in the process and we presented our compliance checklist, uh, which is full green. Um, and in just a second, I'll uh, show it to you. Uh, but uh, yeah, after that, uh, uh, CDF talk started uh, offline vote in the mailing list. So you can see the results of a vote here. Actually, the vote is still ongoing, but we've got a bunch of uh, plus ones, including a number of uh, plus ones uh, from um, uh, talk members, so binding ones. And it looks like really positive. So we are waiting for official announcement, but it looks like everything is on track there. There was no concerns, and uh, I believe that uh, you will graduate as planned. So thanks to all who contributed. Thanks to security team for reviewing checklists, etc., which is, was required for CI and for CDF graduation. And yeah, thanks to all uh, con who contributed to code of conduct and other areas because it really helped us uh, uh, to get this story over the line. Now we are just waiting. Okay. Any questions? I just wanted to say thanks, Oleg, for all the work you've done on the the CDF graduation. Uh, I know you've put a lot of work into that, and it's much appreciated. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Agreed wholeheartedly, and absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Great result. Oh, well, yeah. Let's see uh, how we utilize it in the future. But, yeah, I think that it was a net positive experience for us because we updated our documentation, uh, our guidelines, anyway. So regardless of CDF graduation, it was uh, net positive for the Jenkins project. Um, so I'm quite positive about that. Okay, so the last item we have is from Alisa about Jenkins API video. Mm -hmm. So would you like to describe it, Alisa? Um, yeah, so... Um... Thanks to CloudBees, uh, they gave me a, a, a chunk of money, money to, um, to create a video that talks about Jenkins. And the goal of the video is to help basically promote Jenkins and you know, see 
um, to let people know why Jenkins is so great, right? Um, and we, we wanna attract uh, more Jenkins users, of course, more people to the community. Um, and uh, my goal is to have this played on Jenkins.io and in social media as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's to promote Jenkins and to put it into a good light for Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just playing it uh, through Zoom screencast. I'm not sure how it works. Uh, but yeah, this is a draft of the video, right? So um, there was a reservation with a few updates. Yeah, so this is, uh, so this, this video is, um, is not final. Uh, mm -hmm. We're working on the final version right now. I'm hoping to get it either in the next week or two. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is mm -hmm. just a, um, the draft, the latest draft. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to get approval to use it on Jenkins.io. You mean uh, on Jenkins.io uh, on the front page, right? Yes. Yeah, so in and terms of placement there, would it replace the, replace the top level icon for some period? Do you have a, a visual design that you envision, Alyssa? Would it replace the, replace or be above the, um, what I've heard called the jumbotron? Yeah, uh, no, I, I don't think so, Mark. I think it would be towards lower, lower towards the page. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it's either, it's either before those uh, logos or before the blog. But okay, I don't, you. I don't want it to replace the Jumbotron for sure. Okay. Who would be doing the technical implementation for that? I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, one thing that uh, technically we can embed videos from YouTube on the Jenkins website, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it works through macros and I'm not sure that, that this macros would work on um, the uh, main page because it's generated from Haml. So it will require somebody to embed the video so then would you suggest it? So you said that it's, it's easier to be put it on YouTube, right? And then... Well, so, uh, we need to host the video somewhere. We can okay. host the video from Jenkins.io, I believe. Okay. Could we? No, we should, I think it should be, we should, ho I think we should host the video on YouTube, but we'll present it through the page on Jenkins.io from the YouTube hosting. Oleg, like, yeah. I think what your, your observation was is we need, we need somebody assigned that takes that and says, okay, let's make sure it works within the context of that page. And that'd be part of the pull request to, to make it work. Yeah. So we can easily put it on Jumbotron because most likely everything will go crazy. Mm. If you try to embed video here. Right. Uh, yeah, embedding it here in a static context, yes, it's doable. Mm -hmm. At the same time, yeah, we have never tried it. So, right. well, somebody would need to, to implement it. Uh, and yeah, if it's hosted on YouTube, we could embed player. We actually did it uh, for a few uh, um, blog posts uh, before. So we used embed video there. Mm -hmm. Just a second, mm -hmm. I'm looking for a blog post which would be doing that. Maybe this one. And, well, but yeah, there are definitely blog posts which embed the video, and it's not a problem if we do it uh, in the content which is created from ASCII doc, because we created mattress for that. So, Oleg, this is when I'd propose let me take the assignment to work with Alyssa on, given that it's I've got the the doc off, documentation officer title and. This is really something that goes into the docs. Let me take that. And mm -hmm. if I'm not able to fit it capacity wise, I'll go looking for somebody else to help me. Okay. Mm, yeah, so there are two parts. So one is technical implementation. Another one is about uh, approval. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, the one question about approval is that basically there was no approval request in the developer mailing list. And yeah, I'm not sure whether advocacy and outreach would work for us. Uh, well, it's something to decide here, I guess, right now. And uh, well, after that, if everybody agrees, okay. So do you want me to initiate an email to the dev list? Mm, well, I would rather get feedback from other participants, whether you feel it's required or not. And for me, I don't think it's required. Okay. So my sense is this is a place where, where it's, it's a reasonable thing for the governance board to decide, yeah, this is a fine, fine thing to include at the top level page. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alex, Daniel. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Promoting Jenkins is great. Um, no opinion on that question. A uh, quick question though, um, is the general content of the video final? It's pretty much, it's almost final, Daniel. Um, we, there, was, there were two edits that we sent to them, one which uh, Oleg caught, which says uh, Jenkins.com, to be Jenkins.io, that was in the audio. And then we asked them to tweak, brought to you by, um, I think we changed it to, thank you to our sponsor, CloudBees and CDF. So those were the two things that we're going to change. Um, the audio, the person that is speaking is also going to change as well. So we just use the person that was working on this video as kind of like a placeholder. Mm -hmm. Did you have something that you saw that, that we need to change, Daniel? Um, I'm, so I just looked at the video real quick at the start of this meeting and what I noticed is the device shown in the video is a railgun and I'm not entirely sure we want Jenkins to be associated with that or maybe I'm just reading too much into that. Uh, so. Is that the part that Oleg is playing that you're concerned about? Uh, yeah, the, the earlier version, this looks nice and futuristic, but the other looked a lot like a railgun. So, uh, hence the question. You mean uh, this one? Yeah. That one. I mean, I, I look at this and it looks like uh, that US Navy weapon system on these giant ships that has technical issues. Mm. Okay. So I may, may uh, it might be that I'm reading too much into it, um, and I don't need this to change. But perhaps that's something to be considered. How yeah. that looks if if we expect others to have the same uh, association. Right. Right. No. No. I think it's a valid point. Uh, but I like to uh, to hear what others think. I abstain. Yeah. yeah. Alex, Mark. Did, did no? Did you say there are two versions of the video? Is that? No. This is this is almost the final version, the one that Oleg was playing. Okay. Yeah. Um, it would it would be useful to for me to be able to watch the whole thing, including the audio, before okay. I can give some feedback. So maybe I can do that um, via um, email or something. Um, yeah. I would just like to just watch the whole video and see. Um, with the audio, what I think. Okay, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So I just uh, noted uh, the current votes. So what is your timeline for publishing Kalisa? Probably two weeks. I'm hoping by next week, but I don't, I think that's going to be wishful thinking on my part. Mm. Well, uh, so yeah, taking uh, the plans for announcements, et cetera, um, yeah, next week. 
or maybe. But yeah, my understanding that August will be quite uh, packed with announcements because we mm -hmm. need to announce a roadmap, we need to announce uh, graduation, uh, bearing that uh, it's finally signed off. We need, uh, we also have a few online meetups planned. So, well, it's okay, but uh, yeah. Well, I think my main goal was trying to get this into the um, announcement for the graduation. To, um, but I'm not sure if that's going to, um, they're going to be able to make it. No. So, yeah, assuming that uh, Daniel and Alex take a look, review, and agree whether it's okay or not, do we need any other steps? Nope, that's that's all that I I need. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, then yeah, let's see what would be the feedback. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on this topic? Not for me. Okay. Thank you, Alisa. Yeah. So the next question is rather formal: is whether we want to switch uh, the meetings uh, to Zoom uh, going forward or whether we want uh, to do them in IRC. Because last time we were discussing, basically everybody said that the preference is IRC. So, oh, sorry, the preference is Zoom actually. Yeah, Zoom my, preference, can, my pre preference continues to be Zoom. Same. Zoom works. At least in Zoom we see people. Because yeah, in IRC, it's also uh, difficult uh, to get participants. So it's not something like in IRC, we had more participants, especially during July, August time frame. So I'm not too concerned about switching to Zoom. My main concern is actually about uh, correctly doing meeting notes. Because if you are doing it in IRC, basically everything is recorded, everything uh, can be tracked uh, by participants. But if we do it in Zoom, then just we have video publishing delay. Secondly, we may have no good meeting notes. So if we resolve this part, I think that switching to Zoom would be totally fine. And would you like to assign a scribe? I, I realized you've scribed, you've acted as a scribe for the meeting notes for many of these meetings, but I could do that or others could do that so that you can focus on running the meeting if that would help. Uh, it would always, uh, it would definitely help. And uh, yeah, the governance meeting doc as well as others are deliberately made public for comments. So anyone can uh, make suggestions uh, during the meeting and they can be uh, integrated afterwards. Yeah, so, yeah. so maybe particularly with, Oleg, you and Alex as board members and official board members, maybe it's best if somebody who's not a board member like me or Alyssa or Daniel, that we, we take the notes so that you can focus on the meeting. I, I'll, let, let's try that the next time and I'll see if I can contribute by doing that. To be honest, I, I'm fine with not hosting these meetings as well. But yeah. <laughs> uh, it's You're a, doing a great job, Oleg. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, actually, uh, Meeting notes in Google Doc, they're important, but I think the more important thing is to actually propagate uh, these notes uh, to developer mailing list threads. Because uh, historically we used the governance meeting as just a final uh, approval, rubber stamping uh, meeting, but the most of the discussions and communications ha happen um, in the mailing list. So for example, when we discuss a topic, when uh, uh, major uh, decisions uh, done, etc. We, in my opinion, we should just ensure that uh, we communicate uh, these decisions and notes uh, back mm -hmm. to the uh, mailing lists, so right. that uh, everyone who participates there can uh, easily access the information notes, and it, it remains uh, the source of truth. Agreed, and th and that feels like a good role that whoever the scribe is could take to do that. That way the, the board members don't have to carry that burden and 
but you're right, absolutely. If we've got a thread in the dev list, that is the place to confirm that the governance board chose this rather than making those people go find the, the governance board notes. Yeah. Oh, yes, is, there yes, no, no. is there no automatic transcription service for Zoom that we could use, even if it's not quite perfect? Well, uh, we publish video on YouTube, so in YouTube uh, we can just enable transcription uh, just in one click if you want. Uh, but it's far from being perfect. And let's say if you're a native speaker, it's probably okay. If you're not a native speaker, yeah, it uh, leads to various funny things. Yeah. So I would prefer to not use automation there. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, the skipping the automation is healthy because it lets us keep just the relevant points, just the specific details that are relevant to retain. So I don't object to, to taking the notes and, and making sure that the notes accurately describe what we're doing. I agree. Let's try uh, to do that. And then let's assume that going forward, uh, Zoom is a default uh, communication channel. And it pretty much aligns up with all special interest groups, etc. which are mostly in my video calls these days. Okay, any other topics for the discussion today? None for me. Mm -hmm. All good. Okay, then thanks everyone. And uh, I'll see you in two weeks. So the next meeting will uh, happen as usual. It's 4 p.m. UTC, Wednesday, uh, July 20, sorry, August, August. something. <laughs> yeah, in, so it will be uh, August uh, 12th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Oh, well, yeah, the Thank summer you. is almost over. It's so, crazy. Yeah. Not here in Arizona. We're, we're oh. still... Uh, we're still in the, uh, let me, over 40C, so. Yeah, it's, okay, wait a second. It's oh. it's almost, it's it's over 30C in December in Arizona, if I remember right, isn't it? So. <laughs> well, sometimes, not, not not all the time. It gets, it gets down into, you know, below 30C. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, hot. Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks all. Uh, so see you at the next meetings. Bye. Thanks, Alex. Bye, Bye everybody.